BGP, you traditionally had a two-byte uh, autonomous system number. And there's an article here that I've got up in, in the browser that you can see by, uh, by Jeff Doyle. Jeff, if you're not familiar, wrote um, a, a couple of, well, he's written several books, uh, but two of them on TCP IP and routing protocols that are considered kind of standards in, in the networking industry. So this article goes back 12 years, 2008. So it's not like four byte autonomous system numbers are new, but Jeff is someone that you can look at as an author who really knows his stuff when it comes to technology, IP and IP routing particularly. Um, you know, so this article covers a lot of what, what was going on. And if you go back to 2008, well, what happened here? You had this two byte, a 16 bit number space giving you AS number zero through 65535. And if you've done any BGP provisioning, you're probably really familiar with that. And some of them are reserved to be for private use. Uh, the IANA reserves 1,026 of these, the basically the upper end of the range, 64512 to 65534 uh, for private reusable ASNs, like you would do in a lab or kind of like you might do for RFC 1918 address space. Why use a public autonomous system number that would be meaningful to the internet if it's just for your internal use and uh, you don't need to share those in any way? Okay, um, there's a few other notes here, like two, three, four, five, six, a special use and, yeah, and so on. And as we scroll down through the piece, uh, Jeff points out that four byte autonomous system numbers, we just doubled the number of bits. We went from 16 bits to 32 bits or four bytes. Now we've got 4 billion, 294 million, 967,296 autonomous system numbers, et cetera, and you still have a, a private range here. And what gets interesting about this is simply, how the heck do you remember a number that is so large, 4 billion, 200 and whatever? You can't keep that in your head. You can keep a five digit number in your head pretty okay. You went back when we were at a, a two byte ASN number and you were limited to you know, 65,000 and something on the top end, you could probably remember that one. Four billion and something? No, no. <laughs> For the same reason. I mean, do you remember phone numbers? No, you keep them all on your phone, right? You got a, a contact list there that abstracts that away from you. You can barely remember people's names if you're my age, let alone some obscure number like that. So, all right. Um, the, that leads us to, well, how then do you represent these four byte autonomous system numbers? You could just use the raw number. Um, but you've got a couple of other options here. That's just the raw number would be a method called AS plane. AS plane is a simple decimal representation of the ASN from zero to four billion whatever. But you can split that number in half across the byte boundary. Um, it's just, it's just two, two bytes on the left half and two bytes on the right half. And then use this, this second note here that Jeff mentioned in the article, AS dot plus breaking up the number order from low order and high order 16-bit values separated by a dot. Uh, so instead of just 65,000 whatever, you could have 65,000 whatever dot 65,000 whatever. So two 16-bit numbers in effect representing what is really one very large 32-bit number. Now, the rest of this article happens to go into a lot of issues dealing with the rears and so on. And for our purposes and the rest of this lab, uh, we are not going to go through that. What I wanted to point out is some of the RFCs that deal with this uh, topic as so you get more uh, authority here and then uh, pop into the lab and have a look at what four byte ASN numbers actually look like. So we got one document here, the textual representation of autonomous system numbers, a scintillating title, no doubt, uh, RFC number 5396. If you look at the abstract that is at a lot of the, the top of these, you should always read that abstract section in the RFC because it gives you a lot of insight into what this document is all about. It gives you background and context. Now, this is an older RFC, right, 2008. It's far, far from the oldest, but it's got some years on it. So you might be like, I don't care about this, right? It, it, it's old. It, well, you do. Let me, let me take, take us back out of reader mode here. If this document had been outdated or replaced, there'd be a note here in the header of the document that says this, this RFC has been updated by, and then they would provide a link to a new RFC. So this is still relevant, even though it's as old as it is, which makes sense, four byte ASN numbers is 
not one of those topics where you'd think, oh, it's so complex and there's so much nuance, it's just likely to be changed and updated all the time. Eh, not really. So what are we talking about here in the abstract? A textual representation of autonomous system numbers defined as the decimal value of the AS number. It is to be used in all document systems and user interfaces referring to AS numbers. In other words, you're going to find this logic everywhere. Um, we, we don't need to go through it um, too much. It, I just wanted to tag that that information that Jeff shared in that Network World article I pointed out to you earlier is documented here. AS plain, AS dot plus, and AS dot. Um, those are the, the key reference here. Again, AS plain, just a simple decimal representation of the AS number. Uh, AS dot, um, the separation of the 32-bit 4-byte ASN number into two 16-bit chunks, so you get two decimals separated by a dot in that representation. And then the AS dot, not AS dot plus, but just AS dot. Uh, another RFC here, take us out of reader mode, um, autonomous system reservation for private use. So this would be um, you know, a document that is in parallel to the RFC, uh, where's the number here, 5396. This one is 6996 from July 2013. These are ASNs that you can use for, again, private use. Behind your firewall, not exposed to the public internet, in your lab, uh, and so on. And hey, I'm working in a lab environment, so this matters to me personally. I'm curious to know what the IETF says I can use for private ASN numbers. That seems to be a best practice. You know, what would happen if I just picked some arbitrary ASN that was actually in use on the public internet, and maybe somehow I set up a BGP peering accidentally from my lab to the public internet? I mean... How would I do that accidentally, right? But, um, you know, things happen. So you, you do, you, you play by the rules, you do what you're supposed to do. You do what you're supposed to do. So the original uh, ANA was for 1,023 ASNs, and this was documented. And then RFC 6793 talks about four octet autonomous system numbers. Oh, I didn't even bring up that one in this, uh, in my set of tab collections here. Uh, and so now they're basically saying, hey, we're updating this document because things have changed in the world of BGP. Because by golly, we have four byte ASNs now. No, very good. So what is the range? We got more boilerplate and background. Uh, they're telling us many things of that we might see in the AS path characteristics um, of the BGP AS path where we're going to look at BGP routes. Skipping, skipping, skipping. Let's get to the meat of this. We want to know our numbers. IANA has reserved for private use a contiguous block of 1023. This is the same as it ever was, 64.512 to 65.534 inclusive. So that's from the, uh, the two-byte system. If we extend this up into the four-byte system, IANA has also reserved for private use a contiguous block of 94,967,295 autonomous system numbers from the 32-bit autonomous system numbers registry, namely 4.24, yeah, that's 4 billion, 200 million, there we go, to 4 billion, 294, blah, 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 inclusive. So there's our ranges, you got it? 64, 512, 65, 534, and then uh, 4 billion, 200 million, all the way up to the top of the range there, very close. Those are our numbers. All righty, so, now this gets um, interesting as we talk about uh, routes and route uh, notation here. So here I've got a, a, a small little network. Let's zoom in on this for you and see if I can kind of filter down a little bit of the noise. So, so there you go. That, that, how's that? Let's ignore some of the text and just look at these, these four routers here. And you can see this is very simple. We got SP, service provider router one in the middle, and uh, think of them as our hub. And then we've got Boston, Denver, and LA as spoke routers hang off. And they're all paired together with BGP. So as we look then at the router uh, configuration, we've got some uh, BGP peering that has been established. I've already set this up for us. But I do want to point out a few things here in this router BGP uh, configuration. First of all, I'm using uh, this command here. It says BGP AS notation 
dot. So I got router BGP, I've got the autonomous system numbered, it is in four byte notation. I've got the command telling this device, this router, that I want to use uh, dot notation. Well, what are my other options? Well, let's, let's check that out. So if I go, and I say BGP, AS notation, what are my choices? So I have, actually, I, I, have one, that's, I have one choice. I can turn on dot notation or I can turn it off. So if I say no BGP, AS notation dot, and then we look at our router BGP segment again, uh, section of the configuration again, what do we see? Well, before we had that dotted notation, right? Now we've just got one big ugly decimal number uh, for these private ranges that I've assigned to everybody. And it's the same thing if I look at my BGP paths uh, that are in this topology. What is my path? Well, my path shows, uh, like for that first network, 10.34.112.0 slash 20. Uh, my next hop shows that next hop router, and then a path of uh, 4201095330 by this big, long, private, 4-byte AS number. So if I go back in, huh, so this will be interesting. So I turned off AS dot notation, right? And I'm just using plain decimal notation now. Well, this was the AS number of this router in, dot, in AS dot notation. So if I use that when I don't have the feature enabled, what happens? Let's find out. Oop, didn't, didn't bark at me, didn't complain. Uh, okay. So now I can say, what was it, dot notation? No, no, I don't remember. AS notation, BGP, AS notation, and then dot is my choice. If I show BGP again, there's my path. Oh, I got a new route in because that uh, Chicago router is up and running now in advertising. Now I'm seeing um, the, that big long number uh, split into, that big long 32-bit number split into, as they were saying, high order and low order 60-bit. The high order are the ones in the beginning and the low order are the ones at the end of the 32-bit list. I think that's all that we're meaning there, okay? Uh, so we split that number in half taken the first 16 binary bits and converted them into this decimal number. Uh, and then we've taken the second group of 16 bits and converted them into a decimal number, and then split them with a dot in the middle. Conveniently, there is an online conversion tool for this put out by APNIC that I found out. So if you look at the URL here, submit.aptic.net, CGI bin, CGI bin, old school. They have a convertasn.pl, which must be Perl, right? Okay. Wow. Okay, but this tool's been around for a while. Sweet. I feel, uh, I feel at home. So let's, let's pick on some, some numbers here. Uh, I'm going to take 64103.411. Uh, two, two. Let's copy that. Paste that in and let's say convert. What's it give me? Thinking. It's thinking. There we go. The converted ASN of four uh, that goes down to the decimal for 201095330. Uh, not hard to understand. And we can also go the other way with this tool. So. Uh, let's, actually, let's do this. No, BGP, AS notation dot. I'm going to do a show BGP. And, okay, let's focus on this 10.34.112 slash 20 route. I've got that number there. 4 billion, a lot of numbers. Pop that into Apnix Converter. I say convert. It thinks the Perl engine grinds up. It begins to think very hard about this. There's an abacus involved. And then, finally, 
We have a conversion, 64103.41122. Right. So I'm going to scroll back up to when we did the show BGP before uh, we had turned AS dot notation back off and 64103.41122. It's a match. So anyway, that's... I didn't expect it to not work, but I just thought it was a nice little tool that, uh, that to, to have on there and not uh, especially complicated. So again, what, what does this look like if you were to do this by hand? Well, let me, let me put you on the, on the whiteboard here. It's a lot of zeros. Hang on. We got uh, two groups of 16 uh, bits for a total of 32. That's a byte. And that's a byte, and that's a byte. Oh, and I fit it all in, and that's a byte. So with, um, so here's, uh, that that's um, a byte, a byte, a byte, and a byte. Uh, AS plane is going to take this entire huge number and represent that as a decimal uh, all by itself. All right, as dot takes two 16-byte numbers and then separates them with, with a dot here. And that's it. It's all the magic. That's, uh, that's, that's all the magic. I don't know how well that's showing up on the screen there. I probably need a, you know, yet another camera that I could zoom in on that. But, uh, but you pretend you're in the classroom and you're looking towards the front. You're looking at what the crazy person out there is, uh, is scribbling onto the board. And that's 4-byte ASNs um, in a nutshell. So let's look at some Cisco documentation here just to fill in the final bit of blanking uh, that you might have on this. So I have pulled up BGP configuration guide for iOS release 15 M and T. Yeah. And what, what, what have we got? Well, we just it just basically tells us a lot of the same things that we know. AS plane number formatting and what that looks like. AS dot number formatting and what that looks like and how to do the conversions. Um, and notice here with the, uh, if you go to AS dot, they bring in that AS dot and AS dot plus. Um, they, they're using, Cisco here is using both of those all encompassed in their definition of AS dot notation. Uh, they also note in here reserved and private AS numbers and then the Cisco implementation of, and then they talk through exactly how they are uh, doing the implementation, what the steps are. Okay, there we go. So modifying the default output and regex match format before byte ASN numbers. And they, they, here they show BGP AS notation dot, that one command that we were looking at in the router configuration. Um, and then no BGP AS notation dot, which is how we shut it off. Those are the only commands that are in there related to this topic that I can see. Uh, it's also worth noting if you're an operator, uh, at least in the version of iOS code that I'm using, changing AS dot notation was strictly local and interesting to the router only. That is, when I made the change, we didn't have any BGP neighbor resets. Um, we didn't you know, reload routes. Uh, the you know, Nothing happened to my forwarding plane on this router. It just changed the way the number is represented if I am at the command line looking at the console. So one last time, I'm going to go to, whoops. GP, AS notation, whoops, dot, there we go, exit, exit. And now we can see the notations change. There's nothing changed about the routes. If I look at my uh, IPv4 routing table, um, the routes have plenty of age to them from when I first brought these up, uh, including that router I brought up later, which is uh, from Chicago. 
uh, you might remember. He's only 11 minutes old because it took me, you know, I didn't bring up that route until later because I forgot about him in my lab topology. Uh, again, we got no neighbor resets or anything like that. So this is a, should be as risk-free as anything is in iOS. You know, your mileage may vary. If you turn on BGP AS dot notation and your router crashes, well, you know, Cisco code, what can I tell you? <laughs> it's what it is. It's not the kind of thing that's likely to happen, but you know.